produce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine. Hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888 253 3139. Well, it seems just about every week someone comes up and asks, how can I do what you do? How do I get started? I want to spread the truth movement. I want to do YouTube channels. I want to get the word out there and help the liberty movement. How do I get started? Well, today I'm going to be speaking with Andrew Demeter. He is a young documentary filmmaker. He submitted films to our contest. His movie Mainstream Media, The Mind Manipulation Medium, was one of my favorites for our Operation Paul Revere contest. His latest film, We the People Genetically Modified, was submitted as part of C-SPAN's annual Student Cam Doc Film Contest. His YouTube channel, Teen Take, features content from MKUltra to GMOs to false flags. And did I mention that he is just 16 years old? So for everyone out there who's asking, how can I do it? Well, today you're going to find out that it's so easy a kid can do it. Respectfully, of course. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us today. So, Thanks so much for having me on, Leanne. I mean, you're only 16. How are you coming across this knowledge? I know they are not teaching that in Common Core. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, I really just got started with the internet. The advent of the inter internet, rather, has been really influential in my awakening process of sorts. So you didn't have any outside influence from your parents or peers? Well, no, I was just I was just giving a brief answer right there. But yeah, uh, the number one way that I'd probably classify myself as becoming an activist, as you would describe, is I watched a lot of Jesse Ventura, uh, his previous TV show, Conspiracy Theory. Those types of episodes really got me thinking beyond the mainstream uh, thought processes, really. So Jesse Ventura was a big influence. Alex Jones as well, too, not to kiss up to him. But <laughs> that was that was really influential in teaching me about 9-11 and all that. So those were just two influences, and that was an awful answer. No, that was, that was great. So what, what topics are you most interested in covering? You cover some pretty heavy stuff on your YouTube channel. Yeah, probably the three most interesting things that I personally think I cover would be GMOs, false flags, and last but not least, the Constitution. GMOs and fluoride, too. The whole food supply right now is really under siege by the government. And when you're not feeling fully energized and in mental health, you really can't fight against the tyranny that we're facing. Now, with false flags, that's also another topic that I covered, 9-11 uh, specifically. And it's really incredible. Originally, coming into my activism, I really wouldn't have considered it. But people think, oh, you know, government would never harm its own citizens. But as we've seen in Operation Northwoods, although that was in Cuba, governments are really going to varying degrees to actualize their political policies and agendas. Um, we can even see this in Sandy Hook, depending on whether or not somebody wants to classify that as a false flag. But governments utilize problem, reaction, solution. They create a problem, such as 9-11 or whatever false flag event. They see the reaction of the public, which is usually based on emotive reactions. And then they offer a solution that is pretty much just further erosion of our rights, like the TSA, the NSA, the Patriot Act after 9-11. So those are just some of the three brief, most interesting topics that I cover. Right, and that's definitely some very good insight. Now, your latest documentary that you worked on dealt with GMOs. Tell me a little bit about the production process there and why did you choose that topic specifically? Yeah, well, that documentary was entered in a contest for C-SPAN called Student Cam, and I was originally going to cover drones and the NDAA, some divisive, controversial topic like that, but I actually ended up backing down from that because I had contacted some politicians, some local politicians, to comment on those issues, and before even getting to the politicians themselves, I had to go through this line of command of secretaries and stuff, and they pretty much said after the fact that I announced these topics, you know, we're only going to give you 10 minutes because 
the typical interview with a congressman or politician only goes for about 10 minutes, which I find difficult to believe. But anyways, after I figured that wasn't going to work and people weren't going to be willing to talk on those issues, I chose the GMO debate because, as I mentioned earlier, food is essential to life. Without food, people die. It transcends all boundaries. And we need to have good, healthy food and be revitalized in our bodies to be fighting this tyranny. So pretty much throughout that production process, I contacted various people involved from all walks of life, ranging from farmers, biologists, grocers, to a lady from the USDA, who I ended up not including for reasons we could talk about if you like, and just a whole slew of people who were involved in that process. And did you find that a lot of people were really open to discussing it with you, or did you run run across a lot of issues there? I actually ran across a slew of issues. Um, In some cases, the people just flat out said no, like I kind of mentioned the politicians through their line of command. Other people who were acclaimed experts on the topic of GMOs like doctors, grocers, health food specialists, etc. They originally said when I contacted them, sure, we'll be glad to do this. We're really interested. And then after I sent them the questions or maybe after they researched me online, they decided, you know, we probably shouldn't be talking about this because it's too controversial or it could threaten my career and standing on that. So those were just a couple of the problems we ran into along with the whole host of production problems as well. But ultimately, I think it turned out pretty decently. Yeah, I think so as well. You covered a lot of material in just seven, a little over seven minutes. And then, of course, as a journalist, you know that getting people to speak on camera about sensitive topics is just one of the hurdles that you have to tackle. But is there any other advice you could have for people who are kind of wanting to do their own documentary filmmaking or young people just starting out? Well, for people who are interested in starting activism, first off, I would recommend to pick something, a topic that you are vehemently passionate about. Because if you're not passionate about what you're talking about, people are not going to be willing to listen. And also choose topics that are relevant, hot button political topics that people are going to be researching online so you can gain your maximum exposure and get your message out there. Number two, use the materials that you have. Now, with the advent of smartphones, cell phones, mobile devices. You can stream video live in HD on services like Ustream, have that video stored directly in the cloud so you don't have to be so you don't have to risk if that device is confiscated by police as, as we've seen in various cases of police brutality. That video is live. Other people can record it and it's recorded to the service itself. But you also have to remember remember that it is a double-edged sword of technocracy and you can't always trust um, the services out there, especially since they're not tangible. And number three, forge connections. Connect with people on social media. Without doing that, I wouldn't be here talking to you, Leanne, today. So also you can network with people, local activists, national activists, and people worldwide. It's really an empowering feeling to have and a really great connection. Number four, choose a creative format to portray your information. One of my personal favorites is doing man on the street interviews because you can connect with other human beings face to face. You can stray away from looking down and texting at your smartphone all day long and you can actually convey information from one person person to another and it's a great way to wake people up but as Morpheus from the Matrix would have it you can only show people the facts and the door and they themselves have to walk through and deduce their own conclusions and lastly number five get active everybody likes using their computer to get information out there which is a great medium but you also have to stray away from the armchair activism get up on your feet go to local events and just feel the energy connect with other human beings because as we know there is power in numbers that is excellent advice and that's we get so many people that are asking you know how do i get started it seems so difficult you know and it's like you're putting the entire world on your shoulders But if you just kind of take these incremental steps, it's not that difficult and really just getting out there to do it. But I feel like there is such a a huge assault against the youth. I definitely do not envy you being 16. I feel like there's so many things that you guys have to deal with now from mass surveillance to the police state, of course, the GMOs. What do you think is the most important 
thing for the youth to be concerned about? What, what's your teen take? Honestly, I wouldn't kind of pinpoint it on a specific issue. Rather, I would say that people in my generation, future generations, previous generations need to simply take the red pill of painful truth and reality instead of continually comforting themselves with the blue pill of illusion and ignorance or blissful ignorance. Because if people just keep ignoring reality, thinking that their life is some video game, that they have fate and they're not in control of their own destiny, they're not going to really be caring. Specifically at school, I was talking with friends a couple months ago about GMOs, trying to educate them, trying to get them to not be simply apathetic to everything. And one girl, one peer actually said, well, you know, I'm going to die anyways, so why should I care if I'm eating GMOs? And I told her, and keep in mind, there's there are varying or contradicting scientific studies on GMOs, but in my mind, I said... I didn't say this, but according to that type of logic that that just bending over and acquiescing to authority, why don't you go shoot heroin and run in traffic? <laughs> it's completely illogical. People seem to not really care or not even be in tune with reality. And it's just really difficult overall. Absolutely. And especially being in school, school yeah. pretty much just teaches apathy and just really indifference. Absolutely. Well, I'm so glad to see that there is a youthful member of the truth movement out there. You haven't been corrupted and taken over. So vital for the direction of our country. So what's next for you? Well, like we kind of talked about, I just finished that documentary for C-SPAN on GMOs, We the People Genetically Modified. That was a long process indeed. But in the future, I'm currently working on a secretive long-term project, so people can be keeping their ears and eyes open for that. But other than that, I would really like to start some type of blog. I know I haven't been producing weekly videos as I used to, but again, school's been kind of consuming my life recently, as I told you before we started this interview. And other than that, I'm just going to try to keep the doors open for possibilities in the future and try to stay safe because, and I kid you not, this sounds outrageous, but an insider who I know told me that I am indeed on an FBI watch list for supposed connections and people in my circle. So definitely interesting times in which we're living. Well, that's why it's so important to put yourself out there and just let the world know who you are exactly. And as we reported earlier in the news today, you know, everyone in D.C. is on this no-fly list, apparently, because the TSA requires a state ID. So, <laughs> well, And you got to love TSA yeah. pre-check, too, where you can pay <laughs> to have civil liberties. Yeah, it's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll definitely encourage everyone to go subscribe to your YouTube channel, Teen Take. And thank you so much for what you're doing for the truth movement. Thanks for having me on, Leanne. Keep fighting the good fight. What were you up to when you were just 16? That's unbelievable. Well, be sure to go to his YouTube channel, Teen Take, subscribe. Come on, Info Warriors. Let's show Andrew some support for what he's doing for the liberty movement. Now, thank you all so much for tuning in tonight. We will see you here again weekdays at 7 p.m. Central. Just, just for your information, it is a criminal offense to disrupt a public meeting. If you persist in that kind of behavior, you can potentially be charged with that. I want you to let you. I want to let you know that. And we'll go on with our discussion. There's a motion on the table. Uh, I want to say, uh, following uh, Council Member Spellman's, every we have listened to evidence on this subject for several years. Several years. Five, I'll accept five. Uh, we have gone to the trouble to send this item to a council committee and receive testimony from our health department here at the city. We've heard from other experts. I even asked my dentist, and he, his answer was unequivocal. Yes, fluoride in the water at safe levels is something that we should continue to do. So I've heard no scientific evidence to the contrary. I'll support the motion.
Once again, city council had no qualms about issuing another four-year round of toxic chemicals into the Austin, Texas water supply. The hydrofluorosic acid has shown to have the...